Today I'm going to read a story called, a new Museum of Science book called Leif uh, Catches the Wind. And this story is about um, an engineer who is a mechanical engineer. I wanted to know if anybody knows what a mechanical, what the, what the word mechanical means. Yeah? It means like engineering something that is like a machine with a bunch of gears and electricity or something. So you think it might have some electricity as well? Hmm. Good. How about you, Benjamin? Mechanical uh, means like uh, something that's uh, made by uh, something. Something that's made by something. Can you tell us more about that? Um, something that's made mm -hmm. and it helps people some way. Okay. Anybody else have some idea about mechanical or the word machines? Machines are something that help you do stuff. Okay, so do you think a me mechanical engineer might have something to do with machines? What do you think a mechanical engineer might do, Christopher? You could build it into like a robot or something. Okay, that would be a machine, right? Yes. Right, how about you, Mel? Um, it would design it mm -hmm. and make a mini model. Okay, like a prototype? Uh, model, you're right. Yes. Well, this story takes place in a place called, in a country named Denmark. Anybody been to Den Denmark? Anybody know someone who's been to Denmark? Anybody know where Denmark is? It's so above, above Europe, and I'm going to locate it on the map for you. It's right here. This is Denmark. And it's surrounded by what? Water. It's surrounded by water. And you know what? The water actually gives Denmark a lot of wind. So it helps them to create energy, and um, they actually have a lot of turbines. Remember we talked about windmills and turbines before, and the difference between a windmill and a turbine. Anybody remember what a difference between a windmill and a turbine was? Um, a windmill has four, um, whatever, the pedals, and it when it turns and catches the wind, it grinds uh, corn and uh, what's the other? a turbine has three and it uses the wind for electricity. Good job. So this story actually is going to have both of those in there. And in Denmark, they use a lot of turbines to create electricity. This story takes place in Denmark and is about two little children. The characters, the main characters are Dana and Leif. Leif is a little boy and his cousin is Dana. And um, the title says Leif catches the wind. Anybody want to predict how Leif is going to try to catch the wind? Samia? Um, Leif is going to might make a turbine and, and a windmill and see which one which one will do better and try to make electricity from something okay. and maybe and maybe if his dad or grandfather or somebody was a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. they might what what do you think they might do mm, they might make technology make a what make technology make technology for him anybody else have any idea have you ever ca caught the wind when have you caught the wind we made parachutes we made parachutes yep Anybody else remember how we caught the wind? When we made our pinwheel. <laughs> so we know a little bit about things that we used to catch the wind. I wonder if Leif is going to use any of those. Chapter one is called Lonely Day. So this is the email picture of it. And it says the subject is hi. And it says it's from Weather Girl. And her email address, Dana's email address, is Weather Girl. And she's from DenmarkMail.com. And she's mailing it to her cousin, whose name is fishkid, at denmarkmail.com. What do you think, if you're thinking about, if you're making a prediction about what kind of characters these might be, Dana, her name is weathergirl in denmarkemail.com. What do you think you might already know about Dana? Laura. She likes learning about the weather. You think she might like learning about the weather? And the other email address, Ben, is fishkid. And Leif's address is fishkid. What do you think you already know about Leif? 
That's because he lives on an island and there's fish surrounding him. He doesn't quite live on an island, but he lives close to the water. You're right. And so you think he might be interested in fish because there's a lot of fish near him? Yeah. Right. You might. Maybe you're right. Let's listen to the story. It says, this is from Weather Girl and Dana. And she says, hi, Leif. Here I am in my new house. And she has a smiley face and a sad face. I feel like I'm really far away from Copenhagen, which is in Denmark. Mom and Dad are still unpacking. They let me set up my weather station first thing. Were we right? Yeah. You were. And then Dana was online. Subject regarding hi. From Weather Girl to Fish Kid. Leif, I'm so glad you're online. I have a new assignment for you. Go to the harbor and get me wind data, okay? Not just an anemometer reading, but also the Buford scale. Remember when I showed you how to use the B scale? You can use it to figure out the wind speed based on what's happening around you. Report back. I think the front might be on its way to you. One other thing. The fish have been our big goldfish, but they don't look so good. Their gills are pumping hard. Can you help? What do I do? Miss you, Dana. I have a question. Why do you think the fish, the poor goldfish, are pumping their gills so hard? Nathaniel. They're not feeling that good. They're not feeling that good. Why do you think they might not be feeling so good? Melanie? They might not be getting enough food. They might not be getting enough food. Hmm. She's watching them pump their gills. She's watching them pump, pump, pump hard. When do you have to pump, pump hard to get breath? When they're, when you're out of breath. When you're out of breath. So what do you think they're not getting enough of? Water. Ooh, they've got plenty of water in the pond. Air. Enough air. Is there air in water? Yes, there is. I like how you're thinking. Let's see. This is called Harboring Ideas, and this is chapter three. And he's down by the harbor, which is near where the water is, the edge of the water. Can you see anything that's catching the wind, Daniel? What's catching the wind in this picture? Some guy from a parachute, right? The parachute's catching the wind. Anything else that's catching the wind, Daniel? Um, the sailboats. The sailboats are catching the wind. Anything else you notice? Yeah. The leaves. The leaves are catching the wind. Fish need oxygen too, just like people. But fish take in oxygen from the water instead of, of the air. The pump in the fish tank helped mix the air into the water so the fish could get more oxygen than from water alone. Leif stared towards the, the wind turbine blades spinning in the breeze. And as a motorboat passed by, he noticed that they were the blades of the motorboat propeller were spinning just like the turbine blades. Only they were stirring up the water behind the boat. Hmm. Leif suddenly smiled. He had an idea to help Dana's fish. So he noticed that the boat, the paddles of the boat and the motor were making bubbles. bubbles. Ah. Yes. So what do you think he, um, that Leif could do to get air to the fish? Um, he could make a tiny motorboat and put it in the um, pond. And what would happen if he did that? It would make trail bubbles behind it. Okay, and so then the fish would what? What would happen to the fish then? Oxygen. They would have some oxygen. Car, do you have an idea? Make like a miniature turbine. Where would he have to put that turbine then? In the water. In the water. So he's got a problem to solve. So what process do you think he's going to follow? The engineering design process. Right. Leif knew just the right person to ask, his mom. <gasps> she was an expert at generating electricity from the wind. Leif's mom was a mechanical engineer. <laughs> you were right. Who worked on wind energy projects. Engineers are people who combine co their creativity and their knowledge of math and science to solve problems. She chuckled and she tapped the tip of Leif's nose with her finger. I think you should try to figure it out. I can help you, but how about if you design a plan for your windmill and build a model? An hour later, Leif's mother was leaning over him, talking a mile a minute. Oh, that's good, Leif. You got the blades to spin like a pinwheel. Is it important, do you think, that Leif make a plan before he makes his windmill? Jennifer? If you don't make a plan, you might get it wrong and make a mistake on it. Anybody else have an idea about why it would be important to make a plan? Mary? 
Because if he didn't make a plan, he'd keep having to change it and change it, and he'd have to break his finished product down to make a new one, and then he'd have to waste materials, and... You might uh, forget it. Mm, that's a really good reason. If you think of something, you might forget some of the important parts, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's got to think of a plan. That's what his mom suggests. Some of the main points from Leif um, are, there are many. Um, I enjoy reading the stories to the kids, and the kids love the storybooks because I think they make connections to the characters. Um, the stories are about children, and children love to read stories about themselves or make connections to stories about themselves. Um, the Leif story itself is a realistic fiction, um, which is appealing to students, but it also hits a lot of the curriculum in second grade, um, which is what I enjoy about it. Um, we, in second grade, we do maps and globes, so locating Denmark and um, Copenhagen on the map, um, reading compasses and um, locations. is always fun thinking about the temperature and the climate of that area. Um, another um, connection that we make is um, to the genre, the realistic fiction, and the science. The science, we do this unit after we've done the unit on air and weather. Um, the kids are familiar with all of the tools that um, Dane and Leif use. So it all, it all comes back, all that schema that they have for um, that curriculum is, is brought to uh, the forefront. I think reading it again, reading, reading it to yourself, preparing yourself for places that you want to stop and ask some questions or um, bring about schema that kids have for your own classroom um, is important. Um, and also thinking about the setting because it is kind of long um, and depending on the attention span and the time allotment that you have for read aloud, um, you might have to rearrange the way that you read the stories.